Is Bruno Fernandes Manchester United's midfield problem? Hear me out. Because right. Right, forget Angeball, we'll do that next one. Right, so it's the first time we've seen Ten Hag's team take a bit of control of a game. Obviously they didn't start very good, but you know, we'll give them that. They're on a bit of a bad run. Southampton away, you know, could be tricky. Um, Southampton are actually had the best possession after City in the league. This I'm going to get to that. Yeah, go on That's then. a bit of a crazy one. So, What's the stat you threw to me off camera? That was quite shocking to me, to be fair. I didn't know them. Which one? The 3 0 one. That was mad. Oh. This is only the second 3 0 in three years. That I know. Yeah. That I know. Of a Teddy. Well, in the Premier League for sure. Is Eric Tanag's second 3 0 as Manchester United manager? Only second 3 0. 3 0 is obviously the, like a very comfortable result yeah, for big I, clubs. I, I genuinely cannot think of any other game where we've won. So, answering your question, well, finish the question. Is it papering over? Is it papering, is it papering over the cracks? To me. Was it, was it a result that's just literally papering over yeah, the cracks? Yeah, 100%. To me, right now, you can't take anything away from it. However, good result. You needed it in the circumstances. So right now, every game is a What final. is it going to take to convince you that... For me, up man. until January, they need a, a, a style of play. So you mentioned Russell Martin now, the manager of Southampton. He's only been there since last season, I think, for, if I'm not mistaken, mm. right? And he's got them playing the best possession, well, the most possession football in the t first five games of the Premier League. So they've yes. got a clear style of play. They might not be the best at it in the, in the sense of end product quality. at the end of it and the quality because of who they are. However, they're trying to play a, a style of play and they've got an identity to them. What's Manchester United's identity in Eric Tanag? It's Kamikaze, to be fair. There's a massive fall in the middle so he needs to get rid of that and he needs to show the tactical now start yeah I can actually take control of games not when a game you know Southampton were a bit deflated as well so because the two goals came a bit against the run of play at that, at that moment you only started to control after the Leeds goal yeah no I mean um, I think soon as literally I think soon as the penalty miss you're right so, literally soon as the penalty was missed from that moment, obviously, it took a bit out of their crowd. Now, if they did score, it probably would have been a different game. Well, most definitely. We didn't, we, we didn't even mention this off camera, you know. And I don't definitely. think I threw this out here. Yeah. And I, I just thought about it right now, actually, right? You know, when, we, when I was watching the game, because I was taking the mic in the group, I, yeah, I go yeah. to the same mode, Eric Tanagi, you're, yeah. you're leaving too much gaps. But the credit, I, I do agree with you. I've still not seen Eric Tanagi's team at 1 0, then put their foot on. And or put a foot on the neck of another team and say, you know what, we're going to take some of the sting out of the game yeah. here. We're going to pass it around, I recycle think, the ball. I think that's what we saw in this game. And it might have just been a one-off. It might just be Is one Is it because it's at St. Mary's and it it's a be, smaller it team? It might be just because it's a small team. might be because... It's um, listen. I think missed the penalty. It got deflated. Crystal Palace is the test. Hundred percent, without a doubt. Glasner is the top coach. Yeah. He's got good. He's tactics. a top coach. You know, it's been obviously clearly seen from what every big game that they've played. They've yeah. literally given the big teams such a tough time. Now they were two 0 down at home to so Leicester. They're going to be in a bit of a but there you go. It's shown that if they can be two 0 down at home to Leicester, why can't we go there and actually put two or but three in and control the game again? This is what we need to see. We need to see United go there, get an early goal, control the game. You're going to, listen, every team is going to go through a rough patch in a game, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes or 20 minutes, especially on a way ground where the home team is going to dominate a bit or give you a few problems. It happens to City, it happens to Liverpool, it happens to Arsenal, it happens to all the big teams. I want to ask you, right, to finish off today's conversation, a bit of a funny one, I know. Is Bruno Fernandes Manchester United's midfield problem? Hear me out, because, let me land as I normally say, I, I took from the P, <laughs> right, is every midfield that he's been a part of, he's been a part of, there you go, since he's joined Manchester United. He's the common denominator with McFred, he was in front, with just Fred, he's there, Pogba and Fred, he's there, Pogba and McTominay, he's there, just McTominay and Casemiro, he's there, just Casemiro, he's there, uh, Ericsson, any combination... Bruno is the common denominator. As the number 10, does he need to become more Ozil and KDB like instead of being always chaotic and Hollywood? I think... First question, is he the problem? I think... I don't think he's the problem. Okay. There's no doubt that he's 
the best post Sir Alex Ferguson signing that we've seen yes. at Manchester United. I agree with that. There's no doubt. He is a proper leader on the pitch. He might not be captaincy worthy if you look at other teams, but from what we've got in our team, yeah. how long he's been at the club, and he does lead. And sometimes there are games where he throws his dummy out and throws it's his everyone's out got their flaws in that. But for me. You can't change Bruno Fernandes. Yes, maybe he can change his style slightly in terms of moving back into a number eight position and calming the tempo down of the game. However, Bruno Fernandes won't be the player that he was, that he is. Sorry, without them traits, without that kamikaze-like thing. Because if you like, you compared him to Özil and KDB. Now, obviously, Özil's out of this world compared to even KDB for me. But um, the difference between them two as tens and him is. He's a dog, and they never were and never will be. But you KDD, see, uh, KDD, KDB's got it in him. Slightly, but not the way you see Bruno running and slide tackling and throwing himself about everywhere. But does he need to do that all the time? Is he, is he giving this, too much? In this team, you do. I mean, if you've got the pleasure and the luxury of City where you've got so many amazing world-class players around you, KDB does... He can't so change. is that the issue then? So well, thank you. Look, have they not time, built every, the midfield no, around not, Bruno no, the way they should? No, so they, they, you hit that every then. Every time... They've had a decent midfield. There's always been one player or two players off. However okay. you want to set your midfield up. Uh, when they had Matic, Pogba and him, Matic was the one that was ageing. Pogba and him looked fire at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I they agree. They looked I agree. amazing I together. They, did, they were yeah, bouncing off each other so well. And we were thinking, wow. But again, this is what the problem with the fans is. Because now I've seen... Have you bought Casemiro in then? then? Okay, I get that. But uh, I've seen fans now say, give us Matic back over this Casemiro. This is what I mean about United fans. The division is just stupid. It's all fickle, it's man. It's stupid. It's all fickle. So you got a guy yeah. now. That's one thing. But the truth is, yeah, United have always signed someone too late. Yeah. Now, now with Ugarte, you've signed the ball winner when he's you 23 years old. Yeah. There's no excuse. He's Kobe's not, next to him. Kobe's there. I still think they need another eight. And I'm going to throw creative, mine out there. A creative eight. Adam Walton. Michael Carrick's regent. I've been saying it to you all time. I've been saying it to you since last season. And in the Euros podcast, I'm sure I mentioned him twice that I was a bit unhappy that I didn't get a chance for England because I wanted to see him play. Fantastic footballer, man. Gets on with it. No nonsense. What a passer. Proper Michael Carrick. Him, Kobe, the future for United, the future for England. And then I think Bruno's got that base behind him where if you are Kamikaze, you can get away with it and he won't even be as apparent as it is right now because throughout Bruno's career, he is, like you said, the chief protagonist when it comes to creating chances. He's yes. the chief when it comes to starting the press, if you like. When United's energy comes from Bruno Fernandes, to be fair. I think what we need to see from Bruno more is taking shots on again. Yeah, fair, OK. He's lost that element of his game. And uh, I think if, if, if we're going to see United progress forward now, we need to see Bruno leading that midfield properly. Like he's, he's a decent captain, but he's not the best captain about. I think he needs to, like this last game, show that element of control. Mm. United were recycling it well. They did all right. And he shows he's got it in his locker. It wasn't the best team we were playing. It was only Southampton, as he said. We've got Palace away next. Another good test. If they can do it away at Palace, it's a start. We're not going to go, you know, we're not going to go daft. I know I had my little... Prediction, little mess about prediction, but we're gonna keep it calm and level headed here. Thank God. Right, comment, like, share, subscribe. It's been a good one. Thank you very much. Let's go. Let's hope that this one has been a good one. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Pedro.